G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Uh, do all of your favorite YouTube things, click all the buttons you wanna click, subscribe or unsubscribe, do whatever you want. Not gonna tell you what to do, just appreciate that you're here and you're, uh, yeah, you're here to watch this video. So let me talk about the video. <laughs> it is um, 25 minutes, it was about five hours long. Um, and if it looks like I'm trying to talk to you in the video, that's because I was. I did uh, record it real time and I was going to edit it all together like really nicely. Um, my actual problem wasn't the uh, the fact that like anything really happened. It was what I was saying. I, uh, I have to level with you here. Yesterday I was not in a great place. I was kind of a little emotional. Um, and we, maybe we'll talk about that later. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't want to clickbait you into watching or anything, but I'm not quite sure where this voiceover is going to go because I do want to talk about what I'm doing. Um, I was just a little emotional in the video and I I started to like really go off on one, I'm not going to lie. I was, uh, it was very unbecoming. I was not acting in humility. I sounded very arrogant in certain parts. I was very, um, I wasn't very kind. I was even like, like very outwardly like popping off a little bit so um, it was a bit of old James coming through and I think um, in my you know week of introspection because uh, over the weekend we did go to an old church retreat that just really sent me into a, a big long uh, contemplative state this week um, I think going back through a lot of all of that was just yeah it put me into a bit of a weird headspace where I felt very combative and, uh, and I was ready to like up people yesterday. So <laughs> um, I gave up on the voice. I decided to mute the whole thing and now I'm gonna re-record over it with the voiceover. So I hope that's okay with you. I'm still gonna tell you what happened um, and then maybe we'll talk about something else as we go along. Cause it's 25 minutes, we got, we got a while. Set yourself up, go get a Diet Coke or something. Um, a celery stick with some peanut butter. That's what I've been doing personally. Um, I, I'm not on a health journey anymore. I don't know if I'm gonna say this, maybe I'll forget about this in a second, but. I think I'm not on a health journey because I've actually just decided like this is my new life. Like this is, I'm just changing this. This is not a journey to like to health. This is just, oh, okay, this is how we're eating now. Um, and I've decided that all of these small changes, um, it's really annoying because I know I can lose weight a lot quicker, but I'm trying this one thing that I've never tried before and it's to actually um, change my attitude and my approach to food. <laughs> I have always been a fad dieter. I'll take on a diet. I'll be like, yeah, we're doing 200 calories a week. Let's go. But I think this just has never worked because once I lose the weight, it's usually for a very specific reason. Like, oh, there's an audition coming up and I want to be um, a little thinner for it. Like, let me try and lose this weight. Um, there have been very unhealthy reasons and I've taken a very unhealthy approach. Well, ironically, um, it's a healthy approach, but the um, there's no longevity in it. So I think this time I have, and I've seen results, but I'm not gonna speak about them because I never do, just in case I put the weight back on, which I usually do. Um, so <laughs> I'm not gonna speak about it, but I, yeah, I've, I made myself a cute little chart and uh, this has actually been pretty good because I don't feel like there's been a humongous um, shift to the system. It's just been a um, series of small changes that have kind of, built a new little lifestyle happening. Uh, a lot of it is a lot of Zumba as well. I've just been like really hitting up Zumba lately, something shocking. And I, uh, I love to pe keep people guessing. Um, if you don't know, I used to be a professional dancer. Does not make you good at Zumba, but I've, there, there are some moves that I feel like I've got down, um, <laughs> but I like to, <laughs> I know why I do this. This is just like some weird personal, like, I don't know, joke, I guess but some moves I will do so badly. And yes, it did start, originally it was because I was very, very tired, so I would do the moves really badly. But then sometimes I'd be like, I would really pull out the old dancer in me and I'd get very pussycat dolls on everybody. And then other times I will just, I'll look like I don't even know how to walk. <laughs> like, so people are constantly guessing, like, does he know what he's doing or is he absolutely shocking at this? <laughs> and those classes are packed too. I am, I am just like, I'm, you know, I'm not on a health journey. I'm on a Zumba journey because this has been providing me so much joy uh, for the past couple of months. I don't know if you've known this, but I've been going for like a few months now. It's, um, it's really been an interesting change to my lifestyle. It's made me a lot happier, a lot more energetic. Um, but yeah, I guess this last week I've just been in a really um, introspective place and it's not like I've been completely unhappy all week. I still experience lots of joy, but very, um, very challenged with some of my feelings about wanting to quit everything and go back to dancing. 
uh, yeah, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later because I, I want to open up about that. I want to be, I'm going to practice my candor with you and um, my new thing that I feel like I'm being called into is boldness. Um, I think even when I've been candid before, I've maybe been a little timid. Um, I'm going to be candid and bold. So that's, that's just what I'm feeling. That's where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds a little space agey. Um, anyway, sorry. But yeah, that was all from my All Church retreat over the weekend. We had it, we were listening to a guy called Shane Claiborne, who's like fascinating. So um, yeah, if, if you're into that, go check that out. I'm not going to bore you with the rest of my um, my weekend until after I tell you what's going on in this video. Uh, so I decided to go back to basics with this one. Back to basics, back to life, back to reality. <laughs> what's that song? <laughs> I don't know the rest of the lyrics. Back to light. I don't know. Um, so I decided to go all the way back to when I first started mixed media art journaling. And uh, I was watching Ranger process videos from the CHA demos uh, on Scrap Time Videos channel. Uh, Christine used to do it. She still does a fabulous job at documenting the CHA show, which is now called Creativation, uh, which we now have the uh, pleasure of going to with Photocentric. Uh, we went there last year and we went there this year. So if you're looking to get more information on all of that, there's vlogs about Creativation on my channel. Um, or go over to uh, Scrap Time videos and go and watch all those videos because um, everyone gives demos and it's more of a buying event for retailers and for, you know, distributors. And yeah, so it, it's really fascinating because these are the actual designers of the products or, you know, the best representatives of those companies showing you what the products are, why they were made, what they do, what they can do, um, how to best use them and with what. I mean, sometimes it's, it's a bit sales pitchy, but um, for the most part, you actually get a, a crash course of a lesson in, in all these techniques just by watching these videos. So that's what happened with me all those years ago. Oh, pardon me. I think I'm going to sneeze. No. <coughs> oh, pardon me. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> and it was kind of stuck as well. Um, anyway, so that's a, it's a really great crash course in techniques. And I was really attracted to Diane Reevely of Dilutions and, and her videos. I was really attracted to Tim Holtz and the videos that he had from CHA as well. Um, and by extension, anyone that I came, came across after that. But I will be honest, the first ones were really um, Diane and Tim. Um, and Diane more than anybody uh, because everything was so colorful and so vibrant and she has such a great, um, really quick um, and, and care I wouldn't say careless, um, carefree approach to creativity. And that was really appealing to me at that time because I was just all, I mean, for real, all I was doing was laying in bed, just kind of waiting for my foot to heal. <laughs> <laughs> um, knowing that as soon as it was healed, we had to go back into surgery and start all over again. So yeah, it was, it was a long, long, long journey to get, um, to get all of that recovered. I was very blessed throughout that journey too. That's a story for a different day, but, um, you know, I, I think having so much downtime and then discovering all these communities that went along with it, I just, I fell really, really quickly into mixed media art journaling and I went on eBay to purchase, a a box of ranger stuff uh, that someone was selling it was like lightly used and i purchased the whole lot it cost me an arm and a leg like i had to really scrounge together my pennies for that and um, i wanted to buy it because i was new to the community i didn't really know all the rules but i thought um that everywhere um like whoever's group you joined you had to use their products uh, which is still actually kind of true but i didn't realize that it wasn't everybody so i don't know maybe if i didn't know that in the beginning i would have chosen someone different <laughs> <laughs> and not spend all that money um but i'm not going to be i'm not going to be mad about the journey and look just on that if we're going to be bold um i respect everybody's decision to run their groups a different way just because i run mine in a certain way doesn't mean that i believe no one should run theirs differently um my personal opinion because i have been asked this many times before of um you know is it right to limit what people can use in a, in a Facebook group when people are just sharing. Um, it's, it's neither right nor wrong. You have to remember that the reason that Facebook group exists um, is, is for a certain reason, right? Mine exists because everywhere I was sharing, I felt like I was co-opting that space, um, you know, or I didn't feel welcome there um, just because of the people that ran the group or the people that were in it. Um, the culture of that group just didn't seem conducive to who I was or how I wanted to share, or I didn't have all the supplies and I couldn't keep sharing there because I wasn't going to buy them. So um, there was a reason why I, I set up my group the way I did on Facebook, and that was post whatever you want that has to do with your creativity. Let's just appreciate that with each other. 
That doesn't make for everyone's favorite group either. Some people don't want to see all that random posting. Um, I personally enjoy it because I, I get simulated by all of it. Um, but also I'm not trying to sell you anything on my group. I think a lot of people, um, this is such a random tangent to go on, but um, for the people that are a little upset, maybe haven't uh, accepted the fact that some of these groups exist to uh, market and that if you are being told to use only those products, it's because that is that is kind of the purpose of that group. Um, yes, you do get to share, but it's sharing very specifically to um, you know build on that product line, build on that culture of that product, build on the, um, the fan excitement of those products. Um, so you'd have to actually ask the, uh, the owner of the group or the, the person that runs the group why their group exists and then you know make your opinion and your assumption about that. Um, but I would just go out there and say that from my understanding, having been a part of these groups before, um, yes, if people sell their own products, like paints and journals and um, you know bits and pieces for creativity they want you to use that because it's going to um, it's going to contribute to them selling the next collection um, and whether you think that's right or wrong that's completely up to you I don't think it's right or wrong I think that if you understand the intention it's easier to accept if you don't like it um, and then you can find an alternative for that but yeah I, I don't know some people just don't some people don't get that and I have been upset before because I've definitely been a part of these um, awkward conversations where it's like, oh, I thought I could just use any paint I wanted. And, you know, then you get your post deleted then people get really upset. And um, yeah, and then sometimes it can feel like an all a pile on attack. I think that's very different. Like <laughs> then you're not really addressing why the group exists. Then you're addressing certain group members behaviors. And I also don't think that, um, you know, an owner of that group should have to wear the behavior of the um, the people in it. I know I certainly can't censor everybody that goes through my group. Um, all I can let you know is is what I believe, where my opinions are, where what I would like it to be about, and uh, hopefully those guidelines are respected. Otherwise, there are ways to kind of remove people. And I, I don't want to get into all of that, but um, all I'm saying is that, uh, you know, I joined all these groups and I definitely got uh, sucked into the culture of it all because it was, it was all about sharing. It was... Um, you know, even if you did have to buy the products, there were like thousands of people on there that were sharing, uh, you know, how they like to use something. And then when one person would get a technique that they no one had thought of before, they'd share it with everybody. And it was super, super fun. It still is. These groups still exist um, in, in all different capacities because, you know, everything changes. This was what, 2015, 2016. I mean, I was a very different person back then too. So <laughs> if we met in that group, um, hi, like let's re-meet. <laughs> No, I still stay in touch with a lot of people, but um, yeah, I used to be a little more outspoken. I used to be a little aggressive too. I think I got into a few fights with people um, a little too publicly. Uh, that was my, ba my bad, my mistake. If I didn't apologize already, I am sorry again. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll kind of just try and let my uh, let my current state speak for myself back then, but I could accept it. I know I was very combative, um, and mostly because being a part of that community was so important to me. It was like my one way of spending a lot of the day um, in communication with people, and because it was expressing my creativity, something I felt confident with, or that I was learning how to feel confident with, or that I felt very expressed by, and that had personal meaning and attachment it was um you know i had just lost my dance career and I, I dance is a great way to feel personally um you know creatively expressed i had lost that all of a sudden so the groups meant a lot to me and i wanted to be able to share because just that just people saying like wow you did a great job reminded me of like being on stage and and people clapping i know that sounds so stupid but you Please, like, I don't know, go harshly when you judge me because that's all I'd known since I was 18 and I was really, really struggling with the difference. Um, uh, and, and it was very, very beneficial for all of that. So I've got lots of fond memories. I've got lots of not so fond memories as well. You know, I think with all the good comes the bad. But if I can just focus on the good today, I know I'm I'm trying to practice my boldness so randomly just by, st <laughs> you know, going into random tangents. But um, yeah, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to take anything away from that experience. Um, that definitely led me to here and I learned so much from the willingness of people to share and I, I think that is why when I started my YouTube channel even though I started it to do that um, unboxing like there was really no 
uh, purpose for me starting it other than um, when I was on that design team, that unboxing was requested. I had actually decided that I, you know, Stella and I were talking about it beforehand. She started a makeup YouTube channel and I was like, oh, maybe I should start one. And I thought, no, it's too much work. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and then I was requested to do that unboxing and I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll do this one video, whatever. If people like it, like maybe I'll consider doing a product review or something. I don't know. Um, I had a really weird aversion to it because at that point I still thought I was going back to dance. I was like, no, this, this arts and crafts, this is like, I'm in the States now. Steve and I I'm married like I'm starting my new life I'm gonna be a dancer again like don't worry about it um, but yeah God had different plans so obviously I ended up going through with that and creating more videos and uh, from the very beginning I had decided this is the way I was gonna do it and I was always gonna consider myself uh, as I was in bed watching those YouTube videos when I after my surgeries or when I was in that Facebook group and I was just I just needed someone to be there for me in those moments and say like hey we see you you're here, like you're still valid. You might not be on stage, but you're doing a really great job here. Um, and, and so all of those thoughts, I still, I still bring with me today and they are really um, the guiding light for how I make a lot of my decisions. I know that if I'm ever making decisions that don't align with those moments, then I'm making the wrong decisions. So um, I hope, I don't know why I'm feeling the need to tell you that, but I hope that brings you a little bit of clarity as to how this this process all started in a super meaningful way, even though a lot of that isn't documented, like none of that is on YouTube. Um, I didn't start YouTube till 2017. So, uh, you know, a couple of years went by where I was figuring all of this out, finding my way, joining groups, leaving groups, <laughs> you know, meeting people, um, having good experiences and bad experiences. And uh, that, that definitely happened uh, and continued to happen throughout uh, the, the past few years. And I do believe that uh, through a, a few painful experiences and a, a few um, unexpected, you know, turn of events, I, I, I shifted the way I felt about everything. And suddenly it was, it was almost like yeah, my desire was just to leave it all because I, I just didn't want to deal with it. I was like, well, this isn't worth it anymore. Um, and then I had to come to terms with why it absolutely was worth it. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, more recently, I know I've been talking about changes in the culture and, and how I wanted to make sure that my actions reflected that. And I think this is, this is an extension of that as well. I think going back to the basics of all of this, going back to the beginning and trying to strip away everything I feel like I've been a little tainted by over the past few years, I think is a very good first step for me trying to, um, walk boldly into that. So I've just decided to go back to, you know, essentially exactly where I started. I was in these delusions journals. These are my very first ones as well. Um, and I would go through magazines and I would just harvest images. <laughs> I would get anything that looked like it could be something and I would just stick them together. And it was all very carefully planned out and very cautiously measured on the page. And I would, sometimes I'd plan my backgrounds and I would make little notes of the things that I was using. But uh, you know, a lot's changed since then. My aesthetic has changed a little bit. My, um, it, the access to materials that I have now is just insane. I am so blessed to have such an incredible amount of art supplies to play with um, and you know, I'm not saying that you need that to have fun, but I'm also not going to take away how how beneficial it is um, to be able to have access to all of that stuff and what a blessing that is as well. So um, it has truly changed my experience. And I think this is why I got carried away and did five hours of this before I decided, you know what, should probably stop and edit the video just so I can make sure I do get it up in time. But I had an absolute blast and it, it's just, this is exactly what I learned what mixed media was at the time. It was just grabbing your dilutions book, making some backgrounds. If you were get, and one of the best things I learned was if you were gonna bother to get, set it all up and get it all out, do as much as you could in one session. So I know you saw like a bunch of things flying across the screen. It's cause if you've got paint on one brush and you finish with a page, grab a new page and put the rest on there. You know who does a really good job showing you this? Um, Inky Quill, Adele. There's so many of her videos where she's literally got her use it up journal off to the side and she will just quickly bring it in run a paintbrush through a stencil and uh, and I know she said it before too because it's true sometimes the the, um, the cleanup pages become so much better than the ones that you were actually working on because I think there's so much more charm to the fact that they shouldn't have probably existed um, or that they're you know you've got an expectation for the page you're working on but uh, you don't really have one for the cleanup page so you're pleasantly surprised all the time not all the time, I shouldn't say all the time, but a lot of the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, this one I loved. I love this. 
this was just like really speaking to me yesterday where I just felt like, um, and I'm not going to try and build too much meaning into it, but I've been having so much growth in like personally and, um, and professionally, but there's the, I, I feel like through all of that, because I've tried to um, make sure that I haven't, um, you know, rubbed anyone the wrong way or, uh, you know, I, the levels of fear that I've built up through my experiences made me feel like people assumed that I was very weak or timid, um, which is fine too. I guess people can be timid, but I, I'm certainly not weak. And I felt like that image just expressed that like through all that growth, like I've actually found a greater strength that I had before and that it was, um, I have felt more empowered knowing uh, where I stood but being able to stay silent in that, not reacting to it, not um, arguing with it, not blowing up about it. In fact, I feel like those were all pretty immature ways that I'd handled things in the past. And I felt like that growth presented more strength than I'd ever exhibited before. So um, that, that little collage, I know it just looks like a collage you throw together, but oftentimes I feel like you, there is so much meaning that's built into these things that you may not even realize at the time, but you present themselves to you. And, um, and this is why I know if you've, been, if you've been really, really looking closely at what's been going on, um, when I was painting over some of those pages, there, there were a few pages that I did cover up and I did rip out and I did cut out and I did just get rid of. And um, all I'm gonna say about that is they just don't represent things to me anymore that I, I wanna be stimulated by. Uh, it was, you know, nothing more than that. I think when you flip through your journals, um, they're they're triggering for so many different responses. I, I think they're triggering from memories, uh, which is a given, especially like if you're doing a travel journal, it's gonna be trigger your trip, right? Um, that's what I've been literally thinking about this entire time I've been doing uh, my travel journal workshop. But if you're also layering in your personal experience into your journal, it's going to trigger emotions. And sometimes we don't want, um, you know, even if we're feeling uh, maybe a little down and out and we're having a bit of a journal sesh about it um, sometimes we don't want to come back and see those things all the time or if there's such a negative representation of that emotion like sometimes it can feel very unhealthy and sometimes it can feel like you don't actually want to revisit that journal or it's just a it's like a little icky feeling every time you go past the page and it could be for anything it literally could just be because you grew out of a certain phase and suddenly you just don't like it anymore um, I like to renovate those pages. We've, we've looked at this before on um, the playtest Patreon experiences, but um, page renovations, just getting rid of it, starting again. There's nothing right. We live in a great day and age where we've got the power of a phone in our pocket, right? So you can take a photo of it. It'll always exist. You don't have to, um, you know, make sure your memory's going to remember that forever. But it made me feel so good just to uh, renovate those pages as I was going, and they're going to have a new life that you know, won't bring me that feeling every time I see them. And that's that's something that I like to do as well. This whole thing just felt very much like coming back to uh, where I started and a nice refreshing, uh, like reset kind of. And I think that's what I was really challenged into over the weekend is just stripping back everything that has stopped you from just, you know, being in that in that purpose. And And a lot of it is fear. I think for most people it's fear. Um, but yeah, I had to be a bit more bold in just saying, um, because it scares me so much that people would know what I'm thinking. Um, I have to be able to be honest enough to say like this week, I really struggled with even wanting to, to do this anymore. I just wanted to quit and go back to dancing because I knew it would be easier. I knew it would be more fun. Um, this work gets very difficult. Um, sometimes the most difficult part can be the fact that you feel so isolated doing it. And those are very normal feelings and I just feel, I, sometimes I do feel ashamed that I feel them because I should be grateful. Um, but I am, I am very grateful and I hope that that shows, I hope that that even shows just in things like, you know, keeping up with these YouTube videos, even though, um, you know, sometimes temptation just says, oh, don't worry, like you can, you don't have to, um, you know, no one's going to care. Everyone else gets to, you know, leave YouTube for months and months. No one really gets mad at them. Um, I do believe that my accountability exists for a reason there. And, um, and yeah, I hope, I hope that that shows through. I think the best thing I could do just for showing is just like to show your gratitude. I know I could say I'm so thankful for everything I've learned along the way and the people that have been involved, but I always feel like the best form of, um, gratitude is to show it. Um, so I hope that these videos, the fact that they still come to you every week shows how grateful I am and that, yeah, I, I just really appreciate it. And I'm just... I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling good. 
<laughs> it's just, it's really hard. It's hard for me to be candid. It's hard for me to be bold like that, but um, I know that it's a good thing. And um, hopefully you've had a good time watching the video and listening along. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.